St. Alexis Falconieri, celebrated on the 17th of February. No, I don't think that's the right word. St. Alexis Falconieri, celebrated on the 17th of February. Yes, the holy picture shows this word. St. James the Apostle, celebrated on May 3rd. St. James the Apostle, celebrated on May 3rd. No, I don't think that's the right word. This should be the word indicated. It would be better if the bookmarks stay where they are now. I'm pretty sure... St. Joseph, celebrated on March 19th. This should be the right word. St. John of Nepomuk, celebrated on January 5th. Hmm. Yes, it should be this one. St. Stanislaus of Shepano, celebrated on April 11th. I think this is the right word. The words I circled form the name of a bank. Cooperative Credit Bank of Ostia. Maybe this is a clue or some kind of note from Cristoforo, but it's my only lead. Maybe this is a clue or some kind of note from Cristoforo, but it's my only lead. The Cooperative Credit Bank of Ostia. She's an old lady with bright eyes. Fund proposals, financial investigations, graphics. Is there anything more boring? It seems like a collection of prayers. I'm not used to stealing. Transparency and trust. A bank for everyone. Hello. Oh, hello. God listens to my prayers. What? Well, as soon as I saw you coming in, I prayed that you'd come over and talk to me. Really? Why? You know, a handsome guy like you arriving right here? Well, yeah. Actually, I'm here because... You are really broad-shouldered. Do you work out at the gym? Well, sometimes I swim a couple of lengths. And your accent is very unusual. You're not from here, right? No. I'm American. 
Ah, a Madikin. Yes, finally I found a handsome and rich man. Ooh. Come on, don't be upset, young man. I think you misunderstood me. Do you see the girl behind the front desk? She's my daughter. I hope you understand. It's just that I'd really like to be a grandmother. She's over 30 now, so... I think that everything I say can and will be used against me. By the way, Paula, hurry up. There is a nice guy waiting here. I'm going as fast as I can, Mom. Youth of today. They do not realize they should not miss the boat. So... The employee is your daughter? Oh, it's so nice of you to show how much you care. Don't you think so, honey? Isn't he sweet? Mom, please, I'm working. Ha! I can't believe it. How long has she been working here? Oh, not long. She took the place of my poor husband. You can ask her for any information. She's really good at her job. I mean... She doesn't do anything else, you see. That includes her non-existent social life. Well, I suppose everyone has their own priorities. But she's wasting the best years of her life, right? At that age, I wasn't like her at all. When I was her age, Antonio and I, well, my husband and I, used to take the car and go to that dark street where all couples go. And then, <laughs> how many back seats were ruined in those days? Mom! Oh, come on. He's a young man, right? Tell me who didn't do these things as a young person. And you should do them too, my dear. By the way, young man. Hmm. Did you come here by car? No, not at all. I, uh, I always use public transport. I'm sorry about your husband. Thank you. Uh, he was a good man. When he kept away from Pepperanata, I mean. You said that he worked here? Yes, my Antonio was employed by this bank. They accepted his early retirement application so our daughter could take his place. Was he sick? No, I would say he was only very, very tired. He was the only one working in the family, you know. At the beginning, it wasn't easy at all. When he retired, he was under a lot of pressure at work, and I think he also lost interest in what he did. You know what I mean? Why is that? I've never understood the reason, but I'm pretty sure it was not the most exciting job in the world. I'm sorry, we haven't introduced ourselves yet. My name is James. Oh, what a nice name. Very American. I am Anna, Anna Marano. You know, I took my husband's surname. I haven't used my maiden name since I got married. After all, I think it's right, don't you? A woman honors her husband's name while his duty is to work, to maintain and protect his family. I have the feeling she's trying to tell me something. Please, Mom, don't torture people. Oh, why don't you hush up, baby? Your role in this world is to marry and procreate. This is the destiny of all women. This is the ordained scheme of things. Got it. I've entered a space-time rip, and this is the Middle Ages. I know what you're thinking, James. Maybe I seem like an old-fashioned woman. But you see, after what happened to my Antonio, we have been alone. And so I have nothing left to do but take care of Paula. This is why I always come here to bring her lunch. If I don't take care of that, I mean, don't you think she is pale? And how can she find a man if she doesn't put on some weight in the right places? Please, Mom, I can take care of myself. You need me, dear. Believe me. And you also need the direct help of the Almighty. Uh... 
Really? Of course. I'm usually here during the day and say some prayers I found in this book. I ask God to send my baby a good-looking man that will break the monotony of her boring life. And you know what? God really exists. Wow. I must say, this is... Well, a strange reason to have such confidence. Obviously, you underestimate yourself, young man. I have to go. See you later. Hope to see you soon, young man. I'm not used to stealing. It seems like a collection of prayers. She's Paola, the daughter of the doting Mrs. Morano. Hello. Here we are. Please forgive me if I made you wait. Wonderful! James and Paola are becoming friends. And forgive my mother. Oh, I think your mother is amazing. You should never encourage her. You must accept the situation, my dear. Everybody likes me. You've been very tolerant. Thank you so much. Well, so what's all this formality? Why don't you call each other by your first names? I would be very pleased to do that. As I said before, you're very tolerant, James. So, are you here to open a bank account? Actually, I'm here on the advice of a friend, so I would only like to ask you some information. Go on. No offense, but I didn't even know this bank existed. That's quite normal. The Cooperative Credit Bank of Austria is a low-profile institute, and it has no other branch apart from this one. I see. This is something we consider an advantage, as we're really a family bank. Even the staff is just like family. Often children take the place of their parents. Look at me. So you're completely autonomous? Generally, yes. Sometimes we receive help, but just in specific situations. What kind of situations? Funds for works of charity, for example. So, you're carrying on your father's work? Exactly. And how do you like it? Not bad. I can't complain. Although I need permission just to go to the restroom, and it's all so boring. <laughs> I can understand that. Listen, my mother likes you, so I'll be honest with you. This job was nothing more than a replacement opportunity. What do you mean? My father asked for early retirement for health reasons. At that time, I was unemployed, and so... But you stayed here. Yeah, he wasn't happy at all that I took his place. But his pension wasn't enough, and we needed someone in the family to work. I stayed only because I couldn't find anything else. You know, the crisis. Why did your father not want you to work here? I don't know. In his last days, he seemed to develop a sort of intolerance towards this place. But probably, he only wanted the best for me, like all parents do, I suppose. Antonio Morano wanted to keep his daughter far from this bank for some reason. I don't think Paola knows the real reason. Dear Dad, if he knew I was still here... Don't worry. I'm sure you're doing your very best to make him proud. Oh, James, you're so sweet. Mom, we're trying to talk. Would you mind? It's not my fault that you speak so loud. You mentioned this bank receives funds for works of charity. Yes, we receive support for that kind of financing. From who? From the Istituto per le Opere di Religione, the Vatican Bank, as many call it. Is this place connected to the IOR? No, not exactly, but sometimes it supports our institute for this kind of business. We've got a little office that takes care of this. I see. I understand that for a little bank like this one, the IOR may seem like a very big deal. I read about the IOR in the book Cristoforo left down at the guest house, so Cristoforo was investigating here. This must be the right lead. The problem is that without his help, this lead could have already reached the end of the line. Thanks for helping me. My pleasure, James. It seems like a collection of prayers. Mrs. Morano. 
Oh, James, I beg your pardon. For what? Well, you see, just by chance, I overheard your conversation with my good ear. By chance? And a small detail came to mind. Recently, a man came to my house asking the same questions as yours. You know, about my husband, his job, and the bank? A tall man, very kind and wearing a black suit. Not so different from you, James. Christophero. It's just that... Well, how to explain? He didn't have your charm, my dear. What did you talk about? Well, of course, I immediately asked him if he was married. You know, for my daughter. But guess what? He said he was a priest. What bad luck. Hey, wait a minute. You aren't a... No, I'm not a priest. I'm starting to consider writing it on my shirt. Oh, well. It's not so important. You're American, right? And priests can get married in America. Not every priest. Marriage is permitted only to Anglican priests, for example. Angla what? Oh, I don't understand all these religions at all. Such as the one with that fat god, always seated. Anglican religion is just a form of Christianity. Just like Catholicism. Oh, really? I don't know. Never heard of it. And Buddha is not a god. But I think it's better to get out of this vortex. Mrs. Murano. Oh yes, sorry. So this fellow was particularly interested in an old book of my Antonio's. I don't know what was written in it. It was too boring for me to read. But near the end, I saw my husband writing a lot of things in it. Things about work, I suppose. Is it possible to see it? I haven't got it anymore. You see, the priest insisted that I lend him the book for a few days. I didn't feel like giving him something that belonged to my dear Antonio, but he practically begged me, and he offered me something in exchange. What was that? That book of prayers you see on the table over there. So that is Christophero's book. I couldn't refuse the exchange, you understand. It would have been just like, I don't know, refusing a gift sent directly by the Lord. And believe me, it's better if he's not angry with me, especially at this time. Moreover, the priest told me the book was very, very important to him. Did he explain why? Yes, and that's the strangest thing. You see, he said the Book of Prayers was given to him by one of his American friends, a priest called James. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I never gave that book to Christophero. What a fool that I didn't understand before. You are American, right? And your name is James. So it's either an incredible coincidence, or... I know that man. Exactly! Mrs. Murano, it's very important for me to have a look at that book of prayers. Well... Is there any problem? Listen, James. You're a nice guy, and I'm sure you're perfect for my daughter. <laughs> Thank you. I think. But I'm very protective of my personal things, especially those that allow me to ask favors of God. Is she talking about prayers? But even apart from that, don't you think it's strange that you'd like to take back a gift you gave to a friend? Yeah, it's just... It's a long story that Christophero has invented, and I need to understand why. I have no proof that you're the same James, the one the priest talked about. Do you understand me? But I told you I know him. We're old friends. His name is Christophero. I don't remember his name. Anyway, it could be a coincidence. I believe in coincidences, you know. Like the fact that the name of my neighbor's daughter is Anna, just like me. Isn't it incredible? It's a small world. The James he was talking about was a priest like him, 
But you told me before you're not a priest. As a matter of fact, I was a priest. Okay then. Call him, so I can be sure you're friends. I can't. Christophero had an accident. Now he's in the hospital. Oh, that kind man. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'd hope his condition is not serious. Well, let's do it this way. Convince me you were a priest. I am sure you have something that can prove it, right? Mm, I don't know what to show her. Here's my Bible. How many people do you know with a Bible in their pocket? And how many people do I know with a book of prayers in their pocket? Hmm. Please, Anna. I really need that book. All right, then. But don't take it away with you, okay? And when you're finished, please remember, you owe me a favor. Okay. Thank you so much. Now that I have permission... It seems there's something under there. I can't do this with my bare hands. Why should I? I can't do this with my bare hands. It seems there's something under there. Why should I? Why should I? I should write it down in the notepad. I can't do this with my bare hands. It seems there's a coin, or something like a small metal. It's a small metal with the picture of a saint. There's a Latin inscription on the back. Here's your book. Well, time to go then. Thanks again for your help. Wait a minute, young man. You owe me a favor, don't you remember? Um, yeah, right. Sorry. What's it about? I'm guessing either wedding bells or sugared almonds. You must promise a date to my daughter. No kidding. Well, um... Come on, I helped you. Have you forgotten? Yeah... Okay... Don't say anything. I heard you, dear. I... I... Miss Murano... Paola. Paola... I think that... We'll see each other again. It's a start. Thank you so much, young man. Bye-bye.
The picture on the small medal represents Pope Leone I. There's an inscription on its back. Ecclesium Sancti Leonis de Leprignano. Cristoforo wanted me to recover this if something happened to him. Maybe I should investigate more. I'll write down the Latin sentence in my notepad. I've got nothing to ask him right now. Ecclesium Sancti Leonis de Leprignano is written on the back of the small medal. Church of San Leone from Leprignano. According to history, Leone I, who became Pope in 440 BC, was the only one who managed to stop the advance of the Huns guided by the powerful Attila. He was the first Pope to receive the title of the Great, and the Catholic Church worships him as a saint. Leprignano is the ancient name of the village Capena. The name was changed in 1933. The search engine directed me to an old church of Capena dedicated to St. Leone. That must be the place Cristoforo wanted me to go. So this is the famous Church of Capena. I'll ask the keeper if it's possible to take a visit. As I said before, this church is our pride. Thanks a lot for accompanying me. It's really beautiful. How long have you been working as a church keeper here? Practically always. Wow. You must really love your job. I was born and grew up here in Capena. The church has always been one of the greatest attractions for tourists. My family owes so much to St. Leone. We've been the church keepers for four generations. I'm really impressed. I love small villages like Capena for their ability to pass down traditions from generation to generation. Can you remember if a priest about my age with brown hair Italian, has been here recently? Let me think. I hope he has a good memory. It would be of great help right now. Yes, now that you mention it, I remember that a priest came here no more than a few days ago. Really? Can you also remember what you talked about? Or what he was interested in? Eh, to tell the truth, he didn't ask many questions. It seemed to me he already knew everything about St. Leone. So... Nothing useful. Useful? Hardly. I accompanied him here just as I did with you. And when I realized he wasn't going to ask me anything, I left. I figured he preferred to be alone. 
Are you sure you didn't notice anything in particular? No, I told you. Except that he was looking along the lower level of the church while he was praying. Hmm. You were really helpful. If you say so. I suppose you know everything about St. Leone. There's no rock or crack in this place. I haven't examined thoroughly. This church was built before the current village. And although it's not possible to establish a date, there are documents with evidence that its construction dates back to the 13th century. 800 years. Wow. Oh no. We estimate the structure on which the church was built was probably a Roman temple. Yeah, that usually happened with medieval churches. The name St. Leone refers to Leone the Great, the 5th century pope who stopped the invasion of Rome carried out by Attila and his Huns. You are the most knowledgeable keeper I have ever known. I'm also the guide and the souvenirs clerk. You know, these days, you must have more than one job in order to survive. More than one job, huh? Thanks for everything. Goodbye. Enjoy your visit. <laughs>